Some games are absolutely relentless with their combat, and that's what we love them for. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 over-the-top action games with non-stop combat. Starting off with number 10, it's Severed Steel. I think this is one you might not know about. I'm not gonna say everybody hasn't, but it's not one of those games that has necessarily reached ubiquity. Severed Steel is a game custom built to make anybody who plays it just feel like a totally unstoppable badass. It's sort of a combination of the free-flowing combat of fear with the absurd lethality of Hotline Miami, but also with fully destructible voxel-based environments. Uh, basically enabling maximum chaos, right? There's also, like, like, there are other FPS games that have wall running, but to just say Severed Steel's got wall running would be under-reflective of the level of movement abilities in this game. You can kick off walls, slide kick, throw guns at enemies, even flip upside down. Um, the options available at any given time can be almost overwhelming. Like, not only can the game be a little relentless in its difficulty, but there's always just an absolute massive amount going on at any given time. But when you manage to get through a room flawlessly, like a flying a ballerina of death, it feels amazing. Visually, not the most beautiful game out there in terms of raw polygons, but it feels so good to play, it really doesn't matter. And number nine is Sifu, a very different kind of action game. It's got more in common with like a beat-em-up like Streets of Rage, but has an intensity to its fighting that really makes it stand out. At its core, it's a roguelike with a really unusual twist. Rather than just give you lives and continues, the game has this really complex life system where every time you die, your character gets older. I will put an end to your quest for vengeance. That aspect of the game isn't important to this discussion, but it is somewhat important to understand that when you die, you keep going, but you get older. You get too old, it's game over, and you gotta start from the beginning. Certain skills do hold over, but that's about it. The whole thing can be absolutely frustrating if not for one big thing, and that is that the combat in this game is absolutely incredible. <laughs> What makes it so unique is how quick and brutal it is. As far as kung fu fights go in video games, this one has them all beat in just pure style. The entire game is built on combat. There's almost nothing else to it. Normally that would maybe be a problem, but even after multiple attempts, beating up goons just never stops being viscerally satisfying. It is brutally hard, at least with all the assists turned off. But when the combat really starts to click, it really feels good. And number eight is Vanquish. Uh, Platinum really carved out a niche for themselves with over-the-top action games. Not all of them have been perfect, let's say, but one of the most underrated has got to be Vanquish, their 2010 follow-up to Bayonetta. Set on a futuristic space station under attack from an army of robots, Vanquish takes the usual third-person shooter formula popularized by Gears of War and Uncharted and puts it on steroids. Everything from the movement to the shooting to the entire way the story is presented is fast, chaotic, and completely off the wall. Once you start this game, everything just immediately goes to 11. There's almost no wasted time. You are just involved in non-stop robot blasting from that point forward. What makes the shooting unique is the boost meter, which allows you to rocket around the arenas at ridiculous speeds. Uh, makes avoiding enemy fire a cinch, but if you overheat, you become especially vulnerable. So to really master the game, you gotta learn when to boost and when to hang back. There's so many other Platinum games that could show up on this list as well, like Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance, or The Wonderful 101, which are both incredible action games that are 100% insane, but you don't get a chance to talk about Vanquish a whole lot, and it's certainly up there as one of their best, so I think it deserves a mention. Play Vanquish, seriously, I'm not joking about that. Platinum is one of my favorite developers, and Vanquish is genuinely one of their best games. And number seven is Dead Cells. Out of the many great roguelikes that come out these days, there's really nothing quite like Dead Cells. The way it combines side-scrolling exploration and frankly ridiculously fast combat puts it in a league of its own. The basic gameplay, that maybe not something you wouldn't expect. You're a little dude running around a procedurally generated castle a la a Metroidvania. Uh, on the surface, not a lot to talk about, but 
What makes Dead Cells so special is how deceptively simple it is. There's actually some real depth to the combat, which is both unrelentingly difficult, but also incredibly satisfying depending on how much you've played it. The thing that really keeps me coming back is the pace. You can blaze through these levels in a way very few other games allow. And while the combat isn't the most refined, there's so many options available and so many overpowered ways to build your character. I don't know that it really matters. It's just a great game, and while I'm not going to pretend this one cannot be frustrating, it can be extremely frustrating, but it's one of those games where once you've broken through that and you're on a roll, it is so entertaining. And number six is Bulletstorm. Back in 2011, the idea of an FPS game that included some action mechanics and the score system was especially unique. And even now, in the post-Doom reboot world, there's still nothing out there quite like Bulletstorm. This over-the-top action shooter, it's all about killing enemies in creative ways and getting scored for it, more or less. Compared to something like Severed Steel, the movement options are pretty limited, like there's no jump button at all. But in place, you've got a pretty impressive slide, a mighty boot that'll send the enemy flying through the air, and an energy whip for pulling enemies to you and activating traps. <laughs> It's not a lot, but when you combine everything, it's almost absurd the amount of punishment you can deal on these enemies. What really makes it all work, though, is the environments. It's full of bottomless pits to knock enemies into, spike walls, explosive traps, man-eating plants. Like, the whole planet is a massive death trap waiting for you to exploit. The game is just fun to play, and the story, while short, is a roller coaster ride, and they're constantly throwing something new at you. It's certainly got a lot to chew on despite its length. The violence is maybe a little grotesque if that's not your thing, and the story and characters are certainly juvenile to the extreme, but the whole thing just comes together really well as a whole package, despite any of the little eccentricities that might turn certain people off. When you get it, it really just works. And number five is Just Cause 3. No, not Just Cause 4. I'm talking about the third one. Often seen as a kind of lesser follow-up to Just Cause 2. I think when you combine the expansions and get it to an actual decent frame rate, kind of possible with the Xbox Series X or PC version of the game at this point, you got one of the most chaotic and entertaining open world action games out there. It still works. What makes Just Cause 3 better than the previous game is the addition of the wingsuit and vastly improved shooting mechanics. You can just go absolutely nuts, flying around the battlefield, destroying everything in sight, and getting away in an instant. Like, the base wingsuit is just a joy to use, but once you get a jetpack, basically turns you into Iron Man, and that's when things really start to get totally nuts. Th this game is just so much fun to play, even though there are the usual open world moments of downtime and there is a reason why a lot of people consider it lesser to the second one. It has its issues, but compared to almost anything else in the genre, when there is action in this game, it is so over the top and amazing. It's just its own experience. And number four is Doom Eternal. The first Doom reboot stuck pretty close to the original Doom formula. I mean, the action was intense, but they did add some stuff, like I said, kind of scores and combos and things like that. But with Doom Eternal, they took that template and went just absolutely nuts with it. This is a game with the guise and gumption of an FPS, but with DNA that has a lot in common with something like Devil May Cry, which sounds insane, but somehow that is what happened. Doom Eternal's action is absurdly fast, intense, and challenging, but it's also extremely technical. In most FPS games, your primary concerns are health and ammo, but here you're also juggling double and triple jumps, dash secondary powers, the blood punch, glory kills, chainsaw charges, combos, it's a lot. And it can be disorienting to players that are used to more traditional FPS combat, but when it clicks, man, does it work. It is some of the most balls to the wall action gameplay in any FPS ever. It forces you to think completely differently than most shooters, and in that, it can be divisive for some people, and I get that, but for me at least, I think it is an incredibly awesome game, very difficult and exhausting to play at times, and there are even times where I just, I'm gonna, no, not, do maternal's too much for me right now, but that doesn't mean it's not awesome. And number three is Stranglehold. Here's one that is, it's kind of just for me.
Stranglehold is the video game sequel to one of the most amazing action movies of all time, Hard Boiled. And while it doesn't quite live up to the movie's epic final hospital shootout, it's, it's entertaining to say the very least. The game is all about bringing the bullet ballet of John Woo's action movies to video games. Plenty of shooters have dabbled in that area, most notably Max Payne, but this is the game that really runs with the premise and gets somewhere. Every single shootout in this game is just pure chaos. Things are exploding, guys are flying through the air. Your guy is probably sliding on something. It's totally nuts all of the time. And I'm going to say this too. It can look janky as hell. It is not the best looking game. And also, you know, it's sometimes not really as good feeling to play as a, a Max Payne game, but these games are about atmosphere and bouts of intense action, and Stranglehold definitely ramps it up past pretty much any competitor. It's just, it's one insane action scene after another. And while we're talking about second string action games, the Xbox 360 area, another crazy action game is Wet. Not as good as Stranglehold, but uh, it's got its own kind of over the top charms along its line. Maybe not worth an entire entry, but tacking it on here, I think worthwhile. And number two is Devil May Cry 5. Ah, you could put the whole series here. But if you gotta pick one, it's probably the fifth and so far final entry in the series. The combat is at its most refined here, with Nero and Dante being absolute joys to control in the many combat encounters you'll face in this adventure. Nero's new robotic hand really adds to the playstyle too. You can equip him with different arms that have their own special effects, and they can be discarded and replaced with the next arm in the line. <laughs> Dante's mostly the same, but the incredibly impressive combat animations make it really flow more seamlessly than it ever has, and the game looks incredible to watch in action. Again, more refined. The skill ceiling's high, but this is a game that can be enjoyed by just about anybody. Some people are crazy about the V-levels, uh, but I think they're a cool addition too. Maybe not as fleshed out as the other characters, but they're a cool alternative that keeps things from getting stale. The action in this game is just as over the top as ever, and the gameplay is at its absolute best. It's just a fantastically fun game to play. <laughs> And finally at number one, Bayonetta, the series. What else could be number one here, seriously? And where with Devil May Cry, I did pick a single one, but with Bayonetta, maybe, uh, maybe the series works. These aren't technically as complex and challenging as the Devil May Cry games, which were a direct inspiration for them, but it makes up for that slight loss in depth with pure spectacle. These games are about as ridiculous as video games can get. The stories are nonsense, the main character is absurd, the weapons are crazy, the jokes are intentionally groan worthy, and the melodrama not exactly convincing. I'm not sure it's intended to be though, and the games just never stop being fun. <laughs> Personally, I just love them all. The first game is probably the most all-around well-received by fans, despite its sometimes extremely annoying QTE events. Uh, I really love the second one. I also love the divisive third game. And even though Bayonetta Origins is kind of fairly ignored, I thought it was fun too. The last one obviously doesn't belong on this list, but even it has a completely ridiculous over-the-top final battle that puts it up there with the series best. <laughs> These games prioritize spectacle over pretty much anything else. That being said, the combat is really solid through the entire series, and well, they are dumb as hell. Man, are they entertaining. Couple of quick bonuses for you. Midnight Flight Express, a top-down indie brawler that doesn't seem like a lot at first, but man, does this game go places. It's kind of like if Sifu and Streets of Rage had a strangely English baby. It's pure entertainment. The action's relentless, and it's constantly surprising in the direction it goes. No spoilers or anything, but a lot of stuff happens in Midnight Flight Express. Next is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, one of the most entertaining beat-em-ups in a long time. 
Shredder's Revenge is an absolute joy to play. Doesn't matter if you care about the turtles or not, it's just a great beat-em-up that has a relentless pace. And finally, one of the all-time greats, the original God of War trilogy, which is all about spectacle. It does this in a slightly different way as Bayonetta. It's completely built around giving Kratos the Blades of Chaos, which are these weapons that make it so you never have to worry about targeting the enemy, you just mash buttons and watch everything unfold. In comparison to the DMCs or even the Bayonettas, these don't have the most in-depth combat, but they make up for it in this fantastic level design and the pacing. Uh, the new games are very different from the old games. These were about all chaos all the time. They are exciting beyond a shadow of a doubt and have some of the best set piece moments of all time. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.